So who would like to staff a case? It may be something that's going on that you need help with, kind of breaking through and processing, or it could be that you have a session that's going super, super well, or you've made a headway or some breakthroughs with a client that you'd like to share that information with us also. Hi, good morning. I could totally staff a client right now because it's been on my mind. Um, so I have a client. You guys have seen it. This is my first presentation. Um, the only thing that I'm just at loss is I feel like I'm not making any progress with the codependency between my client and the grandma. Um, he just makes little comments of just making himself sick, so he avoids work. But just a background, he avoids every single task. Such as, I don't know if you remember the dressing, the visual schedule, going to school, he avoids it. He has GI problems, but the fact that he told me, like, sometimes I'm just going to fake it just so I get out of school, it's just really hard because he's failing a lot um, with his school. Uh, classes are failing, he's missing a lot. Um, when I talk to grandma about it, she immediately goes, well, you know, he's sick, he needs to be home. So it's just, I feel like I'm not getting anywhere with where I want to be in the case. There's a lot of progress. There's a lot of, um, he's, he's independent in dressing now because we did a lot of rewarding and now he's on it. But just, um, I just don't know what to do in this, at this point where I don't think grandma sees. He avoids writing. He doesn't want to write. Yet he draws a lot and he writes when he wants to be. And as, no matter how I facilitate the grandma, such as, well, look at his images. Like, what do you make out of that? Because she's, school is also really frustrating with her, even all the counselors there. So now they become the enemy. So I don't know. I'm there to support her, but at the same time, I don't know how to tell her, like, look, he's avoiding so many stuff because I don't want to be like his teachers. So, I don't know. That's where I'm at. <laughs> with, just kid. Um, I definitely remember your presentation. I remember what I think the thing that comes across me most from that client that you had, Josephine, is your energy. You had so much energy going into that session. You definitely are invested in, I think, your clients in general. I remember specifically from your presentation with him. Some of what I'm hearing as you're sharing is your own frustration with the process, that you're wishing that things could be different. And you're wondering, okay, how do I navigate this? And I think that it's coming from a place of care and concern because you want so much more for your client. You want him to advance and to be at a different place. So I definitely hear that. And I'd like to hear from you all. What kind of feedback do you have for Josephine as she's expressing these feelings of frustration? And it's not just the client needs, but it's also the grandma because you'd like to partner with her to get your client to a different place. Thoughts about that? Hi, Josephine. Um, in your statement, you mentioned that uh, you said that he avoids the writing. So and, um, what I'm wondering is that maybe the avoidance is derived from maybe some um, academic or educational um, deficit. I mean, it, um, I don't know exactly – if he's failing in school or the reason why he doesn't want to be in school, is it related to a particular person or is it related to maybe he his academic level and then he's using, like, the illness and all the other issues as an avoidance tactic? So um, that's just my thought. Thanks, Gloria. Has he been tested for specific academic areas of efficiency. I know he has a number of other needs that he has been tested for. He does, but I think the issue is no matter how much, because I've been to his um, school meetings, I've been to all of that, um, and most of the time the teachers are like, he knows how to do things, he knows how to write, but it's always on his term. And then he'd use his um, GI issues to get out of seriously every work possible. So it's like no matter how much we accommodate, he finds a way to avoid that in some sort of way. And, yeah. Um, Is he on an IEP? He's not. 
he said a different thing on the 504. And that should have come out because of his GI issues, and he missed a lot of days. So I guess I'm at just that point where I can see he shows me by doing his preferred tasks, like he can do so many things, but then he, um, I don't know, I just feel like I want to tell the grandma how much I know that she knows, but she feels guilty all of the time because of his medical issue. So <laughs> it's not a good place to be. So although you want to share this with the grandma, what what keeps you from? Um, we talk about it a lot. So just, um, I always ask her, what do you make out of this? Um, what do you... Like, I always facilitate it for her to see it, and although she sees it, she always goes back to, well, the FBI issue, well, the teachers are just not very helpful, well, <laughs> it's still on that part. Um, I don't know, I'm hoping that I can facilitate a change. Actually, my video next week is about motivational interviewing, um, but the school is almost out, and he's still in and so. Well, that's it is Josephine. I, I saw even that video. You did. So, you were so invested in this family. Um, so my question: You have a treatment plan for your client, not for grandma, right? Mm-hmm. So just for the client. Yes. Okay. And I heard you say that you didn't. You, you don't want to align with the school against her because of the mm-hmm. guilt and things that she feels, is it appropriate for you to have a treatment plan for grandma? Not in terms of treatment, but I remember your client, and you had rewards if he were to drink his milk, I think it was. You had rewards if he were to, I think, put on his undergarments by himself and things like that. And so, mm-hmm. um, grandma, I'm wondering, have you worked with her on the benefits of these behaviors for him? And how, as he does this, it'll help him. I mean, we don't want to say this maybe as bluntly, but Grandma will not be there all the time to take care of him, and we want him to be able to take care of himself. So as you're processing with him, do you process with Grandma um, the benefits of her behavior in helping him? Yes. So how, um, like, so how are... uh agency work if we work with a kid mm-hmm. and then we have a family support piece which we do have um, a grandma which is to profit stressor to you know to parent train in terms of ADA so we have talked about it a lot mm-hmm. I just feel like um, I think it's always easier said I'm done I mean I can see where she's coming from sure um, and even though she sees the benefits and she even says like I don't want to be doing this when I'm like, I'm old, I will die, no one's going to take care of him. So it's it's always like that, but the change is still not quite there. And um, in terms of like, you know, she can see that, oh, he can probably do it, but then it always goes back to the guilt, like, well, I don't want to get mad, he's sick. So it's. I don't know if that answers your question. So I do have a treatment for grandma. Yes, you have a treatment for grandma. It it absolutely did. And she's moving at her own pace, definitely. So when you mentioned the motivational interviewing, I was thinking, grandma's still at a pre-contemplative state. So she's not in Mm -hmm. contemplation. She's not in maintenance. She's not in action. Um, And so if I'm remembering De Clemente and Prochaska's work, that at a pre-contemplation state, it still is information. So that's mm-hmm. really all you can do. I know that's not probably the answer that you wanted to hear, but it sounds like you're doing what's required at the stage of life that grandma is. Um, sometimes everyone just does not move through the stages of change as quickly as maybe we as the counselors would like, but this is probably a radical acceptance piece to say, okay, I've self-evaluated, I've done everything that I can do, and according to the technique that I'm using, motivational interviewing, she's right where she is, and I just need to work with her from the place that she is. 
I'm probably not what you wanted to hear, sorry. But it does sound no, like, not. yeah, it sounds like yeah. she's a pre-contemplator that just needs more information um, according to that particular um, technique. So I think, good job. You're working well with all of them. And even the fact that you're so aware of what's going on and your frustration, I always have the question, what are you doing to take care of yourself knowing that this is this is what it is. So, yeah. How are oh, you handling yeah, I mean, it's really hard. Uh, it's really hard, especially, you know, when you see, like, a pattern for my values. I'm just like, oh, you go to school, you study. <laughs> I'm very, I mean, I don't have no kids, but I'm, I think I'm authoritarian in that aspect because it is something I value. So I think, like, separating my own values and just looking at from really totally unbiased, it's really difficult because I don't want to have that feeling with my client. And then after self care, when I shut the car of my door, I don't really take it home. I've learned throughout the my supervisor has told me that several times. Like, you know, when you shut the door, work done, go home. And I lost the game game yesterday. <laughs> so that's self care. We won. Yes, I'm <laughs> Okay, that's I'm pretty good at self-care. <laughs> okay, okay. Well, yeah, it sounds like most certainly that when we look at a radical acceptance piece, I think it's good for us to evaluate, have I done everything that I can do, that I know to do? Have I consulted? Have I gathered additional information? Once the answer to that is yes, then this is the radical acceptance piece. Well, okay. And that's a pre-contemplator, and yeah, you're on task for your own point. Thank you. Danielle, you had some feedback to share with Josephine? Well, I was honestly just wondering, like, is it okay or would it be okay in that case that she's in to maybe reevaluate the goals of why they're in counseling or what the reasoning is of like, how long do you want this to take? When kind of confront that head on, or do you just kind of wait the process out with them? I mean, I don't know. That's why I'm just, I'm just wondering, like, would it be okay to do that? I think that's a good idea. That's what actually, thank you, Danielle, that's one of the things that my supervisor actually recommended a while back because when I entered this family, they were super like this, the grandma and the son, like, just the way they even converse. So we thought, like, well, maybe we're not really the agency y'all are looking for because we're very, like, we do a lot of the ADA training and the family support. And I, I can honestly say it was it's kind of different now since we build a rapport.